Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. Very excited to be talking about Crazy Wisdom. We have the founder of the Crazy Wisdom podcast joining us, Stuart Alsop. Hello. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on to the show. Yeah. Very, very pumped. We have a lot to talk about and unpack. You've done 60 of these in a year, which is great. Yeah. And you're kind of doing these like contrasting areas like what role does stress play in creativity or what role does spirituality play in technology and i love that mm. i love that i'm yeah. excited this is going to be a little bit of you know me talking to you about crazy wisdom and also you talking to me about the role that that plays in simulation mm. yeah. so that'll be that'll be cool to, to multiple un- layers multiple layers yeah. yeah you got a background in body work and tech did tech for seven years body work now for three years yeah and so doing this massage as well and this, and this body work this is kind of like really driving a little bit more interest towards how that plays into technology and our world and how we can maybe mm. harmonize those, merge those things together. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check out Stuart's links below to the Crazy Wisdom Podcast. You guys can find it right down there. Um, let's start with this you know, big history take on civilization. We find ourselves mm. as stewards of Earth. Mm. What are your current thoughts on the state of humanity? Yeah, I mean, it's a big question. Uh, the humanity is there's kind of that ha, that deals with perception so like sometimes I wake up in the day in the day and I'm like I feel really good and I'm like okay humanity's gonna go places and we're gonna we're gonna be able to survive all this shit and then other days I'm just like we're screwed uh, so it kind of depends on the day that you ask me today I'm feeling pretty good about it uh, I mean we we've got a lot going for us humanity's always had problems so like our, our evolution has all started uh, our primary evolutionary advantage is problem solving so so that's what we do that's what our minds are created to do and that's why we have hands and fingers and the cortical, the cortical you know uh, it all started because of these hands basically and our opposable thumbs and like like so I, I think humanity has a lot going for it we also have a lot of problems and so it it, it seems that uh, as technology increases that that is becoming more and more of an issue and that the problems are becoming bigger as well as the solutions are becoming bigger as well uh, and the opportunities for the solutions. So, Mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So maybe at the time of the wheel or language or art or any of these first inventions, maybe those were the breakthroughs. Those were massively important at those times. Now it's all like background music, all Mm. those things. And now the new things are like all of the threats of potential disaster with nuclear war, with synthetic biology or artificial general intelligence, and now we have these hands that are maybe building those, the new era of biology and the new era of AI and stuff with, again, these hands. Those are now the cutting edge advances. But it does totally depend on the day you wake up too. I, yeah. I'm on <laughs> whatever happened in dreamland or whatever happened the day before, or if mm. you ate at night or didn't eat at night, or if you had stress the last day, there's exercise. so many very exercise, mm, yeah. <laughs> gratitude. You wake up mm. and you start just being grateful for being alive. All of a sudden the day got better. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And these practices that are interesting, we, we're going to get into that, I'm sure, but, but these practices that we can do that we can change our mindset in the middle of, so we're in a, in, a, you know, in a funk and then we can actually change our mindset with these practices. But then the question comes up, are we avoiding those negative emotions, the negative emotion states, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think uh, potentially the East has, through meditation, Buddhism, etc., has done a pretty decent job at explaining how um, you can still feel feel that Mm. like you can feel that you're really sad at watching a very powerful scene of a movie right you're crying about what happened Mm. but at the same time you're in control and you know you're in control versus not being in control and letting the emotion control you Mm. i think though that may be one of the big distinguishers that i can still be grateful that i can still have control over my actions versus mm. being controlled and it's that. the yeah i think you put it really well it's the witness consciousness the witness. So, yeah so you you step back from the 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 cognition or the intense emotion and you witness yourself as part of you as being caught up in that but then you still have this kind of overarching awareness and then that awareness what is that you know and then then it goes into like life and universe and types of yes, stuff like yes. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now when you did tech for seven years and then you did body work for three and now you're doing crazy wisdom, tell us about this like about this transition between those and why you've been doing it. Totally. So you know I was in technology, I started a couple companies, um, had a lot of stressful situations and the last the last company I built was was quite stressful. Ended up in a in a very difficult situation at the end, had to extra extricate myself from 
And I was just kind of like stress was an ever present part of my life. And it was, I mean, it goes back to childhood, I had a tricky uh, situation growing up. So it was uh, kind of stress has always been a component of my life and I thought it was normal, but at this point it was like, okay, so something needs to be done. Uh, you know, why am I in this situation? And I started looking for answers and then so I started doing a lot of meditation. Um, I had already been doing yoga for a long time, but I went deep into the practice and as I did more meditation, yoga then became more significant towards that practice. Uh, and then all the, the meanings of these terms all changed as well. So it's like now I have a com like com very different view on what meditation is than when I first started that. And so I found these practices really helpful for me. And so I started to, to, to like do training and, and I came back, I was in India. I did most of my yoga t teacher training in India. I did a lot of 10 day Vipassana style meditation retreats in, in like Thailand. Yes, yeah. Yes. Um, and then a uh, whole, whole range of different stuff. Did my yoga teacher training and then I came back to, the, to San Francisco where I was, grew up and, and I grew up in technology. Like my father's involved in technology. So it's always been an ever present kind of thing. And I'm like, okay, I've got this unique position in technology and I was very stressed out and I know a lot of other people are stressed out. So how do I then bring uh, this component that can also de-stress people into that and help people um, kind of find s some calm amidst the noise and chaos? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's cool that you were born here and then you went to India and Thailand for a period after this stressful company building mm -hmm. and to be able to connect spiritually, meditation, the practice. And then that you bring back, yoga, you bring back to the Bay. Mm -hmm. And now you kind of see tech and spirituality in its, in its own new lens. Totally. Three years well, and it's really interesting because if it, the history of yoga and meditation is all wrapped up in globalization as well, yeah, most yeah. people don't know that that yoga, yeah. as we practiced in the studios today, is only an invention of the last 150 years. Uh, there was a, 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 a basically gymnastics got really popular in Northern Europe, and then the British became popular in Britain, and then the Britain Britain because they had colonized India, then brought that to India, uh, started training the national elite there. Uh, uh, the nationalists there, and, and then they basically rediscovered their books through uh, theosophy and through all these religious kind of new new age practices and stuff like that, and then melded together to create what modern postural yoga is now. Uh, and then meditation also happened. I'm still not quite clear on how it happened with meditation and... Um, well, Buddha uh, 2,500 years ago is kind of what the tale is. Yeah, but then but then the actual practice was lost after Buddha. Yeah, so correct. The, yeah, it was yeah, lost yeah, and yeah, picked the, back up. Yeah, and then in that picking back up was then transformed yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. Wait, the, that's very crazy. The British gymnastics bringing to India the, str the how to train their stretch and then train the athletes mm -hmm. resurfaced the old literatures of yoga. Well, and that and was yoga. a new, that was another strain too. So theosophy, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Madame Blavatsky and theosophy. Okay. That was a part of a spiritualist movement in the 1850s where uh, there's this religion called spiritualism where that, that's where you get the idea of medium, a medium and stuff like that. Uh, and so Madame Blavatsky was this Russian woman who made her way to Europe and then to America and started her own religion called theosophy. That didn't take off in America, but it took off like crazy in India. Yeah, and yeah. then that mixed with this gymnastics from, from Britain then combined to create this, 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 this weird new age mixture that nobody can really pick apart anything like that. And so it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Ron, what's this image you brought up? So I can actually explain it. Yeah, uh, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, this is uh, uh, I don't have a good logo yet for my for my podcast. So this is um, uh, that's great. Libsyn's, Libsyn's uh, logo for this is. I thought I saw Crazy Wisdom's logo on iTunes is different though. It right? is, but I can't figure out how to change how to put that into the into so the. So li is this the new logo? No, no. This is Libsyn's uh, default logo. Oh, Libsyn's. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. But it's all good. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, cra the Crazy Wisdom Let's logo. Get rid of that. The cra Sorry. No the problem. crazy wisdom logo is I able to be myself. seen on on I iTunes. Wish I was never born. It's like a mic with like blue flames. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's very interesting about how these things end up coming around. Mm. Almost like new features give put in with what's resurfaced. Exactly. And then they make new things. Two great books on this are Yoga Body um, and uh, uh, Yoga Body and the Roots of Yoga. That explains the rise of modern postural yoga within, because there's also an interesting innovation that happened in the ninth century in Kashmir, India called uh, Tantric, uh, with yeah. a K, Tantric Yoga, not Neo Tantra, which is the sexually um, uh, charged uh, mm -hmm. form of, of yoga, but Tantra itself, and that also influenced this rise as well and got mixed in with this globalization thing because that that essentially overtook 
Buddhism and within within popular contemporary um, Indian philosophy, and then kind of created its own Buddhism, which is Tantric Buddhism, which made it way to Tibet. So it's a really fascinating globalization story. But essentially, all these practices were lost from about um, uh, like I think at 500 BC um, until about 900 AD. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, which is insane for something to be lost that lost for that long. You makes me always think about all of the the artifacts that are disappearing mm. from the planet that we still need to dig up before they disappear into nothingness. Totally. Yeah, yeah, because then we can actually understand where we came from better. Mm. Okay, so this transition as you're like you're unpacking these interesting tech bodywork, you know, spirituality tech understandings takes you to interviewing people for Crazy Wisdom podcast. Yep. Yeah, tell So us. yeah, so so the the I w I've experienced a lot of stress in my life, and people have always told me creative. I was creative, and I didn't really understand what that meant. Uh, and so I was like, okay, I'm creative. I like I create stuff. Some of it hasn't been working out. Some of it does work out. Uh, I want to understand more about how other people deal with stress, and and because if you're going to create something, there's stress. There's always stress there. Um, and I, I think one of the things I've learned on the show is that there's always going to be stress, but suffering is that mind-added created creation that adds an extra layer of of pain on top mm -hmm. of that on top of that creation. So I want to, I, I, I want, because I'm also very lazy, so I wanted to figure out how to, how to create something without uh, uh, working too hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and another nice thing is that you get to unpack these wisdoms from other people's lives and integrate them into your life, teach other people about what you've been learning. Mm. They get to hear it. This is, this is the... This is my logo, yeah. The logo, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. for crazy wisdom. <laughs> the thumbs up from Ronnie. Um, Okay, so so now tell us to keep keep going with what you've been learning now with these sixty mm. guests and like stress and creativity. Keep telling us about. So that. yeah, actually, I started off uh, uh, interviewing people about their meditation practice because I, I view meditation and stress as very mm -hmm. as meditation is the is the practice of, of working with stress. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I started to run into people who uh, didn't have a meditation practice that I really wanted to interview as well. Um, and so I reached out. I got in a Twitter debate about. Um, the work-life balance with Keith Raboy, um, who's a famous technology investor here in Silicon Valley. And we got into a debate, and he suggested I read the book called The Upside of Stress. Mm -hmm. And The Upside of Stress talks about the upside of stress, which is essentially if you reframe stress not as a uh, threat but as a challenge, your nervous mm -hmm. system starts to interact in a way that's like really beneficial. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you are you familiar with yeah, the book? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I love that concept. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah. There's another way to view, viewing that that Robbins pro, Tony Robbins programs helps program into people which is that you know when you think about your heart racing before you do something that you're nervous about you can think about it as excitement mm, interesting you're tackling something new and challenging interesting instead of like I'm the fear yep yeah, yeah. Mm, and that's you got it right in the body posture too because that's what we do right we, we there's a threat this is a threat and then this is this is like I'm open this is challenge. I'm a challenge yeah yeah, uh -huh. yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, so that was a big part of this. Yeah, and, and then so I had to end up using that on that first episode, like use that challenge thing, and like it turned out to be a really good episode. I really enjoyed it, uh, and and so then I just and I fell in love with the process of interviewing, which I want to ask you about and how, how you why you started it uh, and to continue to do this. And yeah, let's like do that. it. Uh -huh. Let's let's uh, let's switch it up. Cool. Are we ready? Yeah. Let's yeah. do right. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, like, what first got you into interviewing people? Insatiable curiosity. Interesting. That's a huge one. Also, just a knowing that there's so many brilliant people that need a platform to disseminate powerful ideas. Mm. And so then just wanting to just go and talk to as many of them as possible on a, on a video switching system that enables us to just stream live. What is it about the recording process that makes it a better conversation? Because I've noticed this in my own interviews, that something about recording the conversation makes it a more interesting, more engaging, conversation for the people actually having the conversation, right? Oh, interesting. Oh, versus not recording yeah. it, yeah? Yeah, I think that's actually uh, something that's plaguing a lot of our world in a very weird way, which is that we have, A, we have lots of thought-provoking conversations with people that we don't record, mm -hmm. so those are forever lost and never get to inspire people. B, some people want to tweet or Facebook or whatever, everything that mm. comes to their mind, and that creates a fuckload of noise mm -hmm. because some people just don't think that that's important signal for them to see. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of a A and B there with that. Mm -hmm. um, 
I've, I've, I've thought that the pur purposely so trying to curate the guests that come onto the program with a high degree of vigilance with their impact on the world as well as the, the caliber of their ideas mm. is one of those things that tries to make it closer to signal and further away from noise. Yeah. And so that, and this is what got me really interested in interviewing you was the was you bringing on Alex Chen for the show because yeah, Alex Chen three times he's the most popular <laughs> guest on the show. Really? Yeah. There have been some people have come on twice, but he's three now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the caliber of his questions. Maybe it's just because of also because of how many questions he comes up with. Yeah, yeah. But the, it, but also he is a very unique individual as well. Yes, so. Yes. Um, I, yeah, I'd love to learn more about, about what you learned from interviewing him and stuff like that. Yeah, well, a couple of things. Um, one of the things is, yeah, Alex Kitchen's asked 50,000 plus questions on Quora, and now he's just like still asking so many questions. One of the things that's um, fascinating about him is I love that, that in the insatiable appetite that he has, and also the, the degree of just not worrying about shame mm -hmm. as something that's so fascinating is like he's just you know he's just gonna go or i'm or i'm just gonna go whoever it is and just ask and say hey i might not know something about i don't know about yeah. this i'm gonna ask you this question and i don't he doesn't know the people he's asking too which is great like <laughs> yes yes uh -huh, which has given me a bunch of influence seeing him do his thing has given me a kind of inspiration in order to just like ask people questions and not really care whether they answer not really care like because i know some of them will will answer the questions and it's really i love like and, and there's something else you mentioned, I think it was in that interview with Alex Chen about, um, about uh, how important the one-on-one -on -one learning process is. Like, w w I think it was working with coaches, but also just Bloom this interview. Bloom 2 Sigma. Problem. Yeah. So what is that? Yeah, Bloom 2 Sigma. If you, if a famous psychologist figured out that if, you, if, if a student has a one-on-one -on -one mentorship with a role with a, a mentor, that they end up performing two standard deviations past the mean of the rest Whoa. of the class. So it's super important to have a one-on-one -on -one mentor versus these classrooms of 25 or 30 kids. Absurd. Um, so it's really important to have one-on-one -on -one mentorship and for it's not just the authoritarian teaching style mm. of a mentor it's like it's like the mentor asks questions like hey what are you interested mm. in oh I want to you have to do something mm. you can't do nothing you have to do something mm. so then the kid gets to pick what they want to do and the mentor can help them be like okay you got you got a challenge okay how can you work through this challenge that not type giving of thing. them the answers or anything Correct. But, but yeah interesting yeah and that's actually gets into why I started the podcast was I was actually I was I was working with coaches and the coaches were very expensive uh, and then I was like yeah. and I started interviewing people I was like wait oh I can just reach out to anybody one of my most recent exactly. episodes was like uh, I interviewed somebody who's this coach to uh, a lot of CEOs and celebrities and and it's about one of like five episodes where I've basically gotten free therapy in exchange for, for um, yeah, yeah. putting putting my whole life out there uh, and, yeah. uh, and so it's been very impactful uh, and it's yeah, like I, interviewing like I, I, it's amazing that, that uh, this process of a one on one where I can just kind of dig into your knowledge base and stuff exactly. like that. Yeah. yeah. And then and then leave that as an artifact for other for people, other people to get inspired well. by. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's you only you have zero people listening. Mm -hmm. Then one person listens. Mm -hmm. Then two people listen. Then you have three followers. And then you have one person shares the content, mm. and then two people share the content. This is the this is the only way that it really that it really grows mm. in, in its most grassroots style. And it takes time. And it right. takes time. The instant gratification mm. has ruined people's desire to climb up a really tall slope. Mm. And mm. We find the most meaning and purpose from climbing up really tall slopes. Mm. That doesn't mean people should be malnourished or uh, or uh, be barely afloat that they can't even take care of their health. Um, so we need to take care of some of the social fabric things to make it mm. so that we can raise the baseline for all people to enable that creative flourishing mm. more effectively. How we do that is a complicated system that um, we're currently exploring permutations of how to do that. Mm, yeah. Interesting. And you had you had uh, Andrew Chen on the show, right? Or yeah, uh, uh, Andrew Yang. Yang. Sorry, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> we're blending Ch out Ch <laughs> Andrew <laughs> Yang. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> funny. Yeah, yeah, Andrew Yang. Uh -huh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he's got some interesting ideas for that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like a basic income or basic assets or all different types of ways of, there's so many trials happening around the world, but mm. um, yeah, there's, there's, there's going to be an interesting um, technology transition that happens and we got to figure out how to 
mm-hmm. how to properly make sure that people don't go into more suffering. But the seed, the seed of the child of the human mind needs the nourishing that it needs, the love and compassion from the mom, mm. the air, shelter, water, food, energy, education, healthcare, all these basic needs mm. in order for it to flourish. And when they're missing those nutrients, the seed can't flourish. Mm. And then without that flourishing and that trauma, having more kids yep. birthed into trauma mm. is gonna Cat is going to be a bad situation. And this is the this is the key thing I've learned about about trauma, and particularly early childhood trauma, is that in a in an individual who is traumatized and who hasn't done the the, the healing, that it's the most important part is to get them into a place where they feel safe. And until that safety is found, there is no possibility of going back and healing that trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's the importance of safe spaces. But then the issue with safe spaces becomes that even they became can become a crutch where you because yeah, yeah. ultimately safety comes from your own ability to to create a safe space, uh, which you which one-on-one teachers are really good at helping you figure out basically Um, you don't want to get too close to coddling but you want to give just enough independence and 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 uh, and love and compassion for the person to mm -hmm. that's why psychedelic psychotherapy Mm -hmm. works really well they build a really long relationship with the patient um, as the uh, as the therapist and then you add the psychedelics Mm -hmm. um, which which helps them integrate the trauma peacefully into their life Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. I want to do a show. I want to do a theme on that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people from Maps that uh-huh. that you could interview to, to to talk about that. Cool. Yeah. So, so what? Uh, where did simulation come from? Where did the the name come from? Where did the idea for this show come from? Yeah. So all of this, all of these thought-provoking people and conversations that we want to have, we we needed a show to have these questions answered about you know how to update the code of civilization across all these different fields and stuff like that. And so the name simulation is. It's super important to run simulations. Mm. And this means like, you know, you see civilization and you see it evolve the way it did. Well, what happened if you tweak some of the variables and it evolved differently? What if the Earth was a different size? It wasn't 8,000 miles in diameter. What if it wasn't 93 million miles from the star? What if the civilization had different organisms that evolved on it, different animals and plants and insects, different humans evolved in a way that we what if we just waited for every seed to have the nutrients it needed without just having kids that were born into trauma Mm. so there's all these ways to think about Mm. simulations besides just simulation theory thinking Mm. are we in a simulation Mm. well because in a couple of decades when we start running our own simulations of civilizations i think we'll quickly realize that this may as well potentially be one Mm. Mm. And who, whatever happens pre-birth and post-death is another very interesting conversation. Are you just gonna, mm. you know, just take off the the haptic suit and glasses when you die, and you're mm. like, damn, I got to my highest level in that life. Okay, go to the next mission, uh. whatever the next quest is. So there's all these different variations on that on that word simulation. And then it's, what I got from that too was that you you invite somebody on to the show and then you get into their simulation because all of us have a simulation running up <laughs> and then that adapts that's your good. own personal simulation, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's really interesting. I love their it. code updates my code. Uh-huh. Their worldview updates my worldview. Interesting. And that's hopefully what, yeah. updates the worldview of other people that mm. are watching. And that's why curation is so important. Yeah, correct. Because uh, uh, one concept I've been working with recently is that as an organism, I can't, Every environment that I put myself in, I was just, you know, in Soma, and that is a crazy environment. I can't, I can't influence how that is affecting me. I mean, maybe I have some sort of control over it, but because most of my thought processes are unconscious, I cannot uh, say exactly how it's going to affect me walking by people uh, uh, shooting up heroin and stuff like that. And so that's why mm-hmm. curation of, and I don't, don't at all want this to mean like that you avoid people who have mental health issues or totally. anything like that. Uh, but there is something to be said about like doing that with a well, eyes wide open kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And the, the wa- eyes wide open especially means knowing how to think critically about how a human got into the shoes mm-hmm. that they're in, because mm-hmm. this is not something that you know, this is all a roll of the dice. Mm-hmm. You could have been born to a mother and father that w- were meth or heroin addicts and that were gone all the time, and we had to be raised by foster care that we had to just keep jumping to and from versus you could be the child of Mark Zuckerberg or Priscilla Chan. You know, yep. you could, mm. it's not that, uh, it's an, this is not a, a, this is not a simple, like I can just walk by and not, this is interconnectedness yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. of everything. Yeah, you can't yeah. be separate from it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is, yeah, really interesting. Um, 
there is a there's a thought but it, it's gone now <laughs> yeah yeah we need to talk on stress and creativity on the, sh sh on the sure. show sure do you want to hit that yeah now? let's do that yeah okay what are the stresses that that, that yeah. you faced in doing this money money yeah, yeah uh -huh. money's a big one um the like staying afloat like mm -hmm. in the creative process is a you know why do artists have to be starving they don't we need to figure out how to make a better social fabric that makes it so that yeah Meow Wolf is trying to do that that's their mission is yeah. to basically make uh make create make it possible to not be a starving artist i actually didn't know that that was the you, you, mission you, you, you get Meow different Wolf. art though you get you're going to get different art without the struggle without that hardship i just want to throw that in there it's a very so important point yeah, yeah they, so uh, there's wealthy artists are a lot different than starving <laughs> artists and so i'd rather i'd rather look at uh, a poor artist's work all day than some you know privileged pompous guy that paints fucking vases and flowers so and you're stuff. arguing that that suffering is a key key element of making well, good you art. have to meet it halfway yeah, not, there you go. I, I can't halfway, argue yeah, with it yeah. but there, there has to be a way to be a little more supportive of the uh, the, mm. the creative effort uh, among all of us well and that's what i've discovered a lot on the show is that is that uh, most of the most creative people are creating from a place of trauma that is a, a the creation is is a natural like therapeutic way of releasing that trauma and that's how, that's what they're they're not doing the art to be famous they're doing the art because something inside of them needs to express that um, something inside them needs to fix the problems they see exactly yeah mm -hmm. it's a burden but it's the most beautiful creative process at the same time you want to go and and and, and, and travel and experience different cultures and go and, and spend more time with your family or watch a little bit more television or Netflix or do a little mm. bit more of whatever it may be. Go out with some friends, go dance with some friends, whatever it may be. Mm. But you're stuck building what your dreams are. Mm -hmm. Every minute you spend away from building your dreams, and this is again, this is the whole hierarchical climb and and, the, and you want to not only increase the impact of what you're doing, but you also want to stabilize yourself financially. You can't stabilize yourself financially when you're running around going out and doing all that other stuff as well. Absolutely. So then there's that thing to blend. And so stress, I'd say for, you know, for me, and I would be interested to hear what, you know, what Ron has to say about this, but I would say that you know, within the process of the last year plus of building this, mm. it's definitely been like how... How can we, you know, just stay above that that point where you like can can I can I can I make all the expenses happen this month? Mm. So, Ron, what about you for the role that stress has played in our creative process? Well, it certainly doesn't have the same amount of stress on you as it does with me, being that, you know, you don't really work other than on this program to generate any funds to finance the effort. So, so I don't think I'm the best person to ask about any stress involved in this creative effort. You seem to be doing okay. You should be grateful that you have a 52-year-old man that understands uh, what we're doing here. And, you know, stress, what, what are you going to do about it? I've been dealing with it for years. You know, this, you know, since 1998, when I set out to do fried chicken, it's been a, it's been a, a fight, you know, a creative effort that's going to uh, promote community, that's going to mm -hmm. uh, talk to young, exceptional people that are thinking outside of the box. It was totally against mainstream narrative, mainstream education. And uh, mm. there was a dark villain that I just couldn't put my finger on it, but I, I'm aware that it's... It was there, it's been there, and it's still among us, and it's right around the corner tomorrow. So mm. stress, there's an element among us that doesn't want things to, that doesn't want peace, love, and understanding. There's no money in it. Mm. And that's what brought my mind when both of you were talking, which is essentially that it seems to be that there is always a hero's journey to it. Like you can't create without a sense of being up against some sort of Sisyphean uh, pushing a block up a, up, a, up a hill over and over again, watching it come down, pushing it up again. And like there's something about that that seems unavoidable. Most, I don't think most people, you know, and, that, and that's the problem with, with what we have today where we have this, this culture where it's just kind of like you only see once you get up above that, above that area because there's so many people out there not getting above that area and there's so many people who are just surviving and manage to keep long enough towards till they've hit that kind of 
that role. Um, so. And where is the time to contemplate the cosmos, to contemplate existence when you got to run around and scrape to get by and all that stuff? So the creative endeavoring is squashed by stress. And another maybe way to phrase what we just talked about as well is to think of if all the basic needs are met, you can summon anything you want, whenever mm -hmm. you want, as well as if you're if you're for, if you're going to live forever, mm, yep. Mm -hmm. If you're going to live forever, and if you have everything you want at, at the th at your first thought that you have it, where is the motivation for you to to do anything? And where's the beauty? Like, and where's the beauty then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can just you know summon it so quickly, or and if you can just live forever, mm. is that good? Do you want to live forever digitally to be able to go and experience all different types of qualia of a feeling and experience mm. um, can you answer that question <laughs> do, do you want to live forever Stuart because oh, I certainly I? don't I, I have no interest whatsoever in living forever yeah it was really interesting because bef before I started on this whole meditation um, you know going off for a long time I, I struggled with that question a lot because I have a lot I have huge fear of death I'm, I think everybody has a fear of death I um, don't you don't have a fear of death no I'm ready to go tomorrow but did, did, bring it on so, bring that shit on <laughs> as, as uh, graphic as you can possibly make it did you have a fear of death before did something happen no I don't even even recall well something happened but even re before it happened I just didn't give a shit mm. I really didn't mm. you know my whole objective in a younger uh, time was to just live my life mm. you know a few people got hurt on the way including myself and I, I would probably change that but uh, other than that uh, it, it was all about pushing the envelope and knowing that nobody ever dies mm -hmm. anyway and there's a lot mm. more to life than you know what our 3d reality suggests so no I'm, I'm not afraid of or will I ever be of death mm. and so I, I had that struggle of essentially like I'm I, I was pretty afraid of death and 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 then you see these people in technology investors who are trying to create a world where there is no death or where where well it should be amortal as opposed to immortal because we can't we're not gonna get the science to become immortal we'll get the science to become amortal which essentially means that we won't die from old age but we can die from a bus accident or something like that like so so you seeing this and like how what a you know if you're convinced that you're not going to die what a huge letdown that'll be right <laughs> if you if if that never comes to pass right uh but it's interesting and then and then i did a lot of meditation practice and a lot of uh, uh research and thinking studying into eastern philosophy and i still i still have a fear of death of course but uh but this 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 uh there is a lot there that can help because what is dying what exactly is dying when i die like and if you ask that question to the core it becomes difficult to find a, a solid answer as to that, you know, like the organism dies, but then it gets recycled, right? Like, yeah, you know. li life is far more, you know, we already have immortality. It's already among us. It's mm. just not in the, these machines, these bodies, this meat puppet that holds this soul, this whole human experiment even. Mm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat the fear and death thing. Cool. And if you want to, uh, you know, I can take you there after the show. If you're done with that, <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll take a gun to my head too. And, uh, you know, I'll be on the other side. See, I told you. <laughs> and then you'd be like, oh, how do we get back? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I don't know. But all I know is we're right here right don't now. Don't have that key. And yeah. that's my imagination. Yeah, yeah, the infinite consciousness, the infinite interconnectedness of things is, makes it easier to mm. not... Contempl not worry about it. You con contemplating it's very, very beautiful. Mm. We visiting death is a very powerful experience over and over again. And um, also something else that I think we were, you know, mentioning earlier is um, the way that the way that you know gratitude plays a role to counteract the stress. So. You know, money was the first one that was brought up. And then there's like the other ones, right? The other ones are, you know, you're, you're kind of getting into a process of, like these are novel stimuli, mm. right? But repeat stimuli can be a little bit stressful, mm. can be a little agitating. When you have to take every single one of these episodes after they're done 
and you have to go and make yep. the thumbnail and you have to go and make the bio and you have to go and make the tags and you have to go and add the monetization marks and then you have to go and add the end screen and then you have to go and do the same thing on Facebook and then you have, that was YouTube, and then you have mm -hmm. to go and do, post it across LinkedIn and Twitter and share it on Facebook and send those links to the guests so that they can go and promote it. That process takes hours. Yeah, unless you have the money. And when you have yep. the money, you mm -hmm. can hire someone that you that believes in you, that you believe in them, mm -hmm. that you can more easily, you know, work together on that, and you can potentially spend more of your time on the creative side of things. Mm. Um, so sometimes one can get caught in that stressful process, and then when I get caught there, I find myself doing gratitude. I'm really grateful mm. for Ron. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah, I'm really, you know, yesterday when we were just you know, chilling after some shows, you know, I just told Ron how just, you know, while I was reading the mm. end part of Esther's book and I was just like, like, holy shit, I came to me again. And I had to tell Ron again that the only reason why the show has gotten this far is because you've believed in it and you've worked with it on me the whole time we've been doing this the last year plus. <laughs> I love you, man. I love you, man. I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like the same thing with my mom and my uncle, right? My mom and my uncle mm. have done a tremendous job at raising me to get to this point and mm. helping me get here. And so mm. when... Big when shout I, out to Bella and Uncle Boris. Yeah. 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 Big shout out to mom and uncle. And, you know, and, mom, and my mom will be like, you know, like, you need some help right now? Mm. And I'll be like, yeah, like, we need some help. And she'll be like, you know, here's 200 bucks. Like, mm. make it happen. Like, keep going. Keep making it happen, you know? Shh, and you, say, don't, yeah, and you don't, don't, be, you don't she's want, stop. you don't want to, you don't want to, to be real. You don't want to be. Uh, you, you want to, don't want to be dependent. You yep. want to be independent. So yep. you want to do your best to, to, you know, to not you know, pool and ask, but you know, we've went out and emailed mm. 200 people that we've interviewed and been like, yo, like we have a serious medical issue mm. that we need to take care of and mm. we need to help paying this. Can mm. we please have your help? And people will send us a hundred dollars, five dollars, five hundred dollars to help us, you know, get through that, that medical issue and get moving. Mm. So, so the, 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 you know, really figuring out how to tap into a community of people that believe in you and asking them for, you know, mm. will you become a five, ten, fifty dollar a month patron? Mm. Can we count on you every month to help out? Because then if that number can increase, that's kind of like maybe a monetization on a YouTube or Facebook. You can rely on that on a monthly basis. Mm. And that's when you experience maybe less of the fluctuations and more of the stability. And that really helps on things. Mm. But gratitude has been a major practice. Grateful for even waking up. Grateful for this day. Mm. Grateful for Ron, Mom, mm -hmm. Boris. Grateful for the community of people that watch the show. Grateful for the guests who are coming on. These practices, and it's written up there on that top line on our mm. on our little pyramid of, mm. of fun fun writings that waking up every day and having that gratitude along with a little bit of a little bit of stretching the body, moving mm. the body around, not just being you know stagnant and uh, and immobile here on a desk, mm. but really moving around. These processes can help one get through stress much more effectively, and then that helps with the creative process. When you're taking that deep breath and you're being mm. grateful, you're like, "I'm, you know, I'm in love. I'm mm. in love. I'm really grateful." And and so just the ecstasy of, of being alive. Well, and that's interesting too, because that could take it back to stress as a neutral definition, which is that in 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 body work we talk about stress as essentially gravity is a stressor, and it's not positive or negative it just is the, the the feeling of being on this planet with this mass underneath our you know so and then exercise is a form of stress like that is a form of stress on our body but it's the form of stress that our bodies evolved to deal with so it is evolutionary rewarded um, and this is why movement feels really good mm -hmm. and if anybody there doesn't feel good in movement I can show you how to feel good because every a lot of people come to this idea of exercise as something that should hurt uh, and I went through a, lo a long Scoot. period of that, which is, yeah. and it, it doesn't have to at all. It should be like joyous, yeah. like in dancing. When, when you feel that part of your body just open mm. up like your hip and mm -hmm. you're like, whoa, it's breathing. It feels great And now. the energy is moving through. The energy moves yeah. through it when you're mm. dancing and you're not worried about what other people are thinking of you, but you're just moving your body. Mm. Yeah, mm. You gotta, that's one of the big things is you gotta get rid of the perception of other people impeding you from achieving what you set out mm. to do. Yeah. Yep. People will get in your way. They shouldn't get in your way of people that say they can change the world. Like, go and change it. Mm -hmm. Like, prove prove the world that you can update the code of humanity. Update the mental map of humanity. Prove the world you can do it. Maybe you're going to do it for just one kid. 
Maybe you're going to do it for your family or your mm -hmm. community. Yep. Maybe you're going to be a moonshot idea. You're going to impact all 8 billion of us, but go and do it. Yeah. And that's that's a key thing which you mentioned is is that a lot, especially here in Silicon Valley, San Francisco, is this idea that you have to make a massive impact change in order to affect the world, but you don't. You, you There's nothing better about creating uh, a Facebook as opposed to helping one kid. It, it, the spectrum of uh, a yoga teacher once taught me, which is transactional. What we're doing here is a... Uh, 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 transactional piece of content. I don't mean to say that this conversation is transactional, but I'm saying that the that we're creating a piece of content that is going to make a small like oh inter change in somebody's life, a small one, maybe a big one as well. But then on the other end of the spectrum is transformational, and that's what you get when you get one-on-one -on -one work, where you can really yeah. kind of get that transformation, transformation in somebody. So it's this, and so you can beautiful. you can go anywhere on that spectrum, and transformational is actually sometimes way, way more impactful. Totally, because there's a if you're affecting one kid who's growing up in a um, difficult situation with not much money, and you're giving him the type of uh, coaching that somebody a CEO gets then you are making not only an impact on him, but if he has kids, you're making an impact on his kids, and then their kids, and then their kids. So it's like exactly. throughout time, you know? Exactly. Yeah. That is a very, very powerful thing to say, is that transformational change that we can help catalyze, and someone goes for generations, mm -hmm. and it's very, very powerful. Um, we like to think about it as different colors on a color wheel. Mm -hmm. Like a moonshot can be green, and then helping a, uh, someone else out on a one-on-one -on -one level can be blue. There's like different colors on a color wheel. Mm. We definitely need all colors. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There's more past the stress and creativity on simulation. What are the other ones that you want to ask? Uh, so yeah, let's. What is your definition of creativity? The definition of creativity. Yeah, this is hard. I like. I like. You know, mo most most important I think for people to say is the words I don't know. Mm. Right. Those yep. three words are um, such a taboo. I think it's very important to know how to say those words. Um, from the short 26 years that I've synthesized stimuli, um, so here's another, mm -hmm. uh, most people associate creativity with art and writing and all these different stuff. But then there's creativity in a business context. There's creativity in a thought yeah, I'm context. Thinking, I'm thinking about it very, very abstractly right now. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, yeah. I, Go for it. Yeah, I'm thinking about it covering all of that and, mm. and, and, and more, I'm trying. Um, the, there's, there's something beautiful about the, the novelty that arises within oneself about a situation that they're in and it can be like you were described it can be when you're you know when you're working on something yourself it can be when you're just talking to someone else and you realize something um, anything from when you're viewing a tree and someone explains that there is a very beautiful as above so below component to the soil and ecosystems as there is to the leaves that you maybe you have a moment of, of awareness expansion you've you've become more aware more enlightened let's say spiritually awakened that those moments can be called creative that that not only was that a time of you awakening and being creative but the other person helping they're adding their creative creativity to it as well um, we like to talk about how everyone is create everyone has the potential to be creative a lot of our social fabric squ just squelches that creativity we were talking earlier you can't mm. contemplate the cosmos you can't contemplate the tree when you're running around barely staying afloat so mm. you can experience some creativity when you're running around staying afloat but mm. yeah. Yeah, but and 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 everybody is creative and it's built into our dna to be creative because we're all creating a simulation of our surroundings all the time yeah. with our senses we're, we're like when I see when I see you I'm not seeing you I'm seeing light reflect off of you and then my neurons are taking that to one tenth of what you know what the light reflected on you is is actually and then they're creating a picture of it combining that all with my sense of smell with my with my um, my my tactile response and everything like that, and creating this picture inside of my head—that's a creation. Like yeah. and like and like. So and every moment can be considered creative. And it's, then thoughts yeah, too, yeah. like thoughts themselves. Like when a paranoid a paranoid person is incredibly creative, like they mm -hmm. are creating everything all the tons time. Tons of yeah. tons of alternative realities and possibilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ron, what are your thoughts on what being creative means? Yeah, I was going to say something. Uh, not, I mean, granted, we we all have the capability to be creative. Uh, when we come in, 
But there's an element, and there has been an element among us, that w we all can't be creative. You know, there are other people that just need to be told what to do. And, I mean, during, not now. Now we have to get out of that mold. But it, it served its purpose. And hopefully we'll just have, you know, less people on this planet. And most of us will be creative. And all we, where we've done is just create a better world for a small number of uh, human beings, mm. you know. So the, the creative process, you know, I've, I've seen it. It's, maybe it's still under attack. I'm not sure. Mm. But, you know, people don't, non-creative people don't like creative people or mm. understand them. Mm. You know, they'll listen to their music. They'll watch their films. They'll appreciate their art. But when they meet them one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. you know, they may have a different opinion. So... It kind of takes all types. Mm. And if you forfeit your creativity, you know, good luck to you. You, you know, b become a cop. I don't know. <laughs> there's, a, there's a great piece of the, what you just said about courage and essentially the courage yeah. to become creative because that it does require a lot of courage in order to create something and then put it back out there as well. Um, yeah. How, yeah. How is that? Has, 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 have you done any interviews where you're just like, I don't know if I could publish that? Have you done that? <laughs> no, even the, even the worst of my performances oh. I, I publish I, I, because I, and I think there's a very yeah. important, I think there's a very important reason to that. One mm -hmm. of them is because you want to be completely vulnerable and honest with like, when we were first starting, I was shit. Mm. I still am barely better than shit, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm just barely better, right? And so um, that's the point is to be able to look back and, and admit like that you weren't that good as an interviewer and that, um, the point mm. of even those initial ones wasn't even for me. The point's not for me. The mm. point is for the guests to be able to shine at their best mm. and communicate what they know and inspire other people with that anyway. Mm. So, so yeah, that's, that's how I feel about that. Interesting. Yeah. The, and then um, is, there's more as well, another question? Uh, well, I, if you want to say something, I have another question that, of something that we were talking about earlier that I yes. wanted to bring up, which was, was really interesting, seeing you two uh, and, and the, the relationship, the co-founder relationship totally, is yeah. really interesting for me yeah. because for, I have had co-founders in the past, but I am now doing this on my own for the past year. Yeah. And something about it is just like, I, I have not been able to ask anybody to work. It's something about has been, uh, 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 I just needed to do this on my own, and it's been re it's really interesting seeing seeing this relationship that you guys have, but then also reflecting on how I don't have that relationship, and I don't it's all inside my head, like and it's like and it's and it's like I can ask people for advice and stuff like that, but I don't have what I, what what I see you guys, and there's obviously downsides to that as well, and there, there's positives to it, and, yeah, yeah, and there's downsides to what I what I'm going through, but also positives to it too, which is really interesting. Yeah, uh, you, yeah, you go first. <laughs> you, you you bring you bring up something very important, which is. When you start something, you know, usually you're either trying to, you know, start it yourself or find one person, two people, whatever you can find to try and start it and put it together. And the dynamics mm. between people that are trying to put things together can be very difficult to, mm. to figure out. And um, I think what we learned with, you know, Esther just on the show with Jiski, we love her a lot and her work's very powerful. She has trick is her pedagogy trick, T-R-I-C-K. Tr you need trust, you need respect, you need independence, mm. you need um, collaboration, and you need kindness. Mm. And when you have those five things amongst the people that you're working with on the projects, you're, I think, much more likely to succeed on them. But sometimes, like, psychometrics are not matching on certain topics. Like, a really good one, again, is to ask the person that you're working with. Like, Ron and I both have a vision on, like, creative warehouses that we really want to see young people work in these beautiful creative warehouses that have tons of space for people to tinker and play and come up with ideas and execute. And... Like, if we didn't, you got to ask the other person, like, what's your vision for what we're doing a year, mm. five, three years, five years down the line? And if it's not aligned, you guys need to talk about it because mm. that's, you, you have to talk. Yeah. And, so, and mm. so there's obviously also, you know, benefits of having two, hand, two pairs of hands or three or versus one, you can just keep going, whatever. Mm. So that's how I feel. Ron, what about you? <laughs> on, our, on our relationship, our <laughs> professional and... Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate the dynamic. 
you know, we're, we're, we're polar opposites. You know, you're, you're a very kind and loving human being where, you know, I'm a more embattled, bittered, uh, older soul. Um, you know, I, I said to uh, Esther earlier that, you know, uh, I'm Alan's John Lennon where he's, you know, Paul McCartney, more positive and I'm um, just a little more negative, but it, it seems to work. It's the yin and the yang between us. Mm. It's it's actually a great, you know, movie material. You mm. know, <laughs> when we get to with this, uh, you know, stadium <laughs> filled yeah. place, you know, the story of us getting here is, uh, is it's quite interesting. But what you had mentioned earlier about trick, you know, we have that. Except I'm a little shy on the K. You know, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as kind uh, as Alan, but we do have each other's uh, trust, respect, yeah. uh, independence. We give each other uh, what yeah. was collaboration. What, collaboration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 we take interest. You know, I'm very much interested in what we're doing. Yeah, yeah the, the stuff, these people that we sit down with are, you know, extremely fascinating. And, uh, you know, I'm exactly where I need to be. So mm. we, have, we have a great relationship. I love you, Aaron. I love you too, Ron. <laughs> yeah. I love you too. So Ron is also kind of on that same, like, depends on which, how yeah. he wakes up in the, in <laughs> yeah. the morning too, kind of yeah. kind of thing where Ron can, uh, he can, he can be a little uh, on the more. I'm schizophrenic. Uh, we you, all. You, are. I know, but yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I wear it comfortably. You know? Yeah, comfortably. Uh, yeah, I don't know when, yeah. when, who, uh, who's going to wake up uh, in, in this Ron Vargas guy, mm. you know, but it's yeah, multiple yeah. Uh, understandings without a doubt. Mm. It's, also, it's also interesting that Ron started from a similar principle set as I did when he was starting Fried Chicken. Mm. Um, like 20 years ago, Ron was also about talking to children, talking to community, building community, wanting to inspire people. And so um, the fact that we're doing like a little full circle with that, except mm. in Silicon Valley, he was doing it in Peabody in Massachusetts. So these kind of first principle things is another one of these things when you're, when you're talking to co-founders that what are the first principles? What are your most first level values that you believe in? Mm. Like, do you believe in building something that makes society better mm. what is that thing how are you going to build it how do you see the future together and stuff like that so that's a, we, yeah that's that's that and it, it seems like an element what i'm getting from this is the ability to have deep conversation or difficult conversations yeah, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. probably should not be in the business of creating anything if you're not able to have a deep a difficult conversation yeah. well one needs to be exposed to that and yeah. practice mm. it and mm. and because it's like rather than like running away because we can't handle it. it's like well how can we baby step you to it you know there's mm. all these stories about the way that you handle um, fear of heights or fear of anything is that you like you baby step your way towards water can you put your finger in the water mm. okay I'll put my finger in the water mm. how about your foot can you put your foot in the water okay I put my foot in the water and so that's how you kind of like you know baby step your way um, into mm. something that you may uh, not be that great at. You don't just run out sinking threes. You you got to do a long yeah, period of, of practice and mastery. Mastery is a mm. very very beautiful part of this mm. of this of this process of creation. It was interesting when you taught me earlier about Meow Wolf. I didn't, I didn't actually mm. know that they had a very deep passion to enable artists to be able to actually breathe and have space to, it, to create. That's and beautiful. it comes from their struggle as well. So they, they started about maybe like 10 years ago creating art out of trash. And for about eight years, they were not making any money whatsoever. And they yeah. were starving artists for yeah. eight years in Santa Fe, making really weird art in a place which is known for its very like good art and good yeah. like traditional art. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they started making a lot of money. And then they're like, we, we are going to make sure that we start uh, this whole enterprise is going to make itself so that artists can get paid for what they're doing. Love it. Mm. That's some beautiful story in First Principles. We need to um, we need to interview the founders of of Malif when they're coming through the Bay. Totally, we, we would love to do, make that happen. Yeah, I've, I've interviewed the the former chief technology officer. Uh, he would be. I'm sure he'd be down next time he's here. Is he, oh, okay, coming yeah. through. Yeah, yeah he's in Santa through. Fe. They're all in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other? Because we have some questions, but do you have w one more, or are you pretty good on your? Questions? I think we've covered the creativity covered, stress. Yeah, 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 I think we got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So on our end. Um, Sewer, are we yeah. alone in the cosmos? Interesting. Uh, yeah, I've, been, I've read a lot about this, of course. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, um, I tend to think we are, n we are not. 
uh, just because the size of the cosmos and the, 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 you know, where, like, we're here, so why isn't something else out there? Uh, then the question becomes, why haven't they contacted us? And then maybe we're the first ones who have developed technology, so maybe we're, but, you know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And then this is simulation, so we must ask you, are we in a simulation? Mm. Mm. I think we are in a hologram, I can say that, I think, because each part represents part of the whole. So I have a whole universe inside of me that represents the universe outside as well. You do as well. I think I'm, I'm relatively sure of that. Uh, so I, I think there is at least a hologram going on. Simulation, I mean, you know, I know the, 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 the theory, which is that, you know, if, if, if we're starting to make simulations and as we make these simulations more powerful, then there might be life inside of those simulations. So, which would mean that our life is also probably a simulation. That's, that's, and so it's an interesting theory. Uh, I have no way to, way to prove it. That's a great answer. No, that's, that's <laughs> fascinating. No, I like yeah. it. Yeah. And our last question mm. is, what is the most beautiful thing in the world? For me right now, it's driving across the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, and it's like this awe-inspiring, I just got a motorcycle and every time I cross it, it's just like, it, it's actually fearful. It's like bringing up a huge fear in me, uh, crossing that bridge, because all of a sudden I'm just like shocked by the, 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 the awe of living on this planet and this beauty of like meeting that ocean and driving across this, 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 this bay that's coming in, this little stretch of water that's opening up this giant Pacific. Uh, and then once I get across and hiking in the, in the woods up there, it's just something magical about that. Like, so yeah, I mean, that, that's again, I think that, that question depends on what day you ask me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then, yeah, the first, the first reaction was love, but, 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 but love is, is not something that can be accurately described in words. Once you put a label on that, then mm. it's like, then it becomes something different, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. The Bay Area is gorgeous. Yeah. And we're very grateful that Silicon Valley evolved in this beautiful part of the United States. And uh, two is, yeah, yeah. When it's very interesting when you start putting mm. words on love, it mm. change, what, what happens? You can't describe it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it just, it's kind of like elusive. It's like, it's like trying to grab water, kind of. Mm. But um, the love is everywhere and everything. It is that infinite consciousness, mm. that everything. Mm -hmm. But mm. all that is is love. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> but we're just sometimes so far away from it, and we gotta we gotta come back to that mother, or that mother, that loving energy. And I think a key term there is a realization, because it's always there, but it's the degree to which we've realized it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. In the moment, how much are we connecting to the everything? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, what a pleasure this has been. Yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, yeah. thanks so much for coming sure. on the show. Yeah, yeah talking, absolutely, my pleasure. Talking to us about crazy wisdom, yeah. what you're building. Yeah. We're very excited to see where you end up going. This is very powerful stuff, being able to interview people about these topics. Absolutely. Also, yeah, keep, uh, keep talking to people like us and the others that you're, that you're talking to on your interviews and stuff, because you'll get good, you'll keep getting good stuff for the audience mm. that you're building for. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And I'd, I'd love to have you on the show again in the future. And yeah, it's yeah. nice because we get the we get video here as well. Start using just I even, do a, it. even yeah. just the phone because it's having video and posting that to other channels is crucial. I got to do it. Yeah, yeah. Much love, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. We greatly appreciate you. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you think about crazy wisdom. Let us know what you think about stress and creativity, the relationship between those things, spirituality and tech relationship between those things, the dynamics between Ron Vogus and Alan Sakyan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ron, for producing and directing. We love you very much. Support the artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in. All Stuart's links to Crazy Wisdom are below. Our links are below as well. Support us. Help us grow as well. Much love, everyone. Go and build the future. Manifest your dreams into the world. We'll see you soon. Peace.